Hey guys, it's Drew with Acusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to have a whiteboard session about numismatic crimes, how we can take one story and see how it could have been prevented. Let's get this video started. So as of recently, numismatic crimes has been happening more often, more frequently, and uh, it's basically been happening at every single show. And so what our plan is as people that are able to influence others and share content with others is to create videos that help people when they go to coin shows to stay protected. Um, and so I actually saw this email a few days ago, and this is what uh, the Numismatic Crime Information Center kind of sent out to everybody. They made a list of 67 rules that people should follow when at coin shows to protect themselves and also protect their inventory. And then that was actually made in 2015. But I feel like there's been such a gap of time in between that and now that dealers start to become lax. They say, oh, you know, every coin show is safe. I'm okay. My inventory is okay. I don't need to follow these rules. And then that's where the crime has kind of came in. And so Doug Davis, the president of... Uh, NCIC really has been trying to drive these facts home and we're going to be talking about a particular story today and a couple of rules that apply to it. But first let's read what Doug Davis uh, wrote everybody a few days ago. He said during the past several months organized groups have been targeting coin shows and coin shops. However, most recently NCIC has seen coin show dealers becoming high profile targets and offenses have occurred at both small shows and large shows across the country. These offenses are becoming a serious issue and usually results in substantial losses. Dealers should review and update their personal business security plans to ensure the safety of themselves, family, and employees. So um, in today's video, we're we'll talking about uh, an incident that happened at Grapevine Convention Center in Dallas, uh, what happened at a show. And so a little bit of a backstory about that basically this dealer was leaving the show on sunday and when you're at this show and you understand this show sunday is when all the dealers are basically packed up and gone i would say 25 percent of the dealers are left just because sundays are really slow you know people are having their sabbath or they're uh they're going to church and coin shows really just aren't hot on sundays so that's an issue because you're left with not many people to walk out to your car with you or defend you um and so when this uh, issue occurred, the dealer was loading his car. And basically what happened is when he was bringing out his inventory in his briefcase, uh, thieves came up behind him out of a car, pulled the briefcase from him, which basically had all of his inventory, all his cash, and they just drove off, right? And so there's a few tips like I was talking about before, about what we want to kind of elaborate on here. But... If we were thinking from the thieves' perspective, they had to think a, a few things through, right? How did they know that he was going out to his car? Um, what did they think of this coin dealer? Was he strong? Was he weak? Um, but what I can gather from just these three points here is that they knew that he was leaving, and they knew that they can get something easy from him. And so I would go to assume that somebody was in the coin show watching him leave, and someone else was calling outside. And so... That's when they were saying they're trying to profile people, target them. And the first kind of tip we want to talk about here is rule number 38 out of 67 that they have on uh, the sheet. It says, coin thieves look for dealers who are vulnerable. And just myself knowing about this coin dealer, he has two bed hips. He just got one replaced and he has one that he needs to get replaced. So these thieves looked for somebody that was vulnerable, look for someone that couldn't defend themselves even if they tried, right? So they ripped the, they ripped the briefcase from them and they drove off. Um, the way to kind of fix this is display some sort of strength. You can't chintz on security. You can't chintz on defending yourself with um, a hole puncher. I'm not going to say the other word. But I think if you develop uh, a display of strength, do you have someone there that walks you to your car? Do you have someone there that works with you the whole weekend? Um, someone that if a thief saw them, they would say, I don't want to mess with this person. And so that's something that's very important to know. You don't want to be vulnerable. You don't want to be the guy that gets taken advantage of just because you wanted to save a few bucks and not bring someone to help you. 
Um, rule number seven, um, don't let cell phones distract you. Um, and in this case, don't let cell phones or, um, you know, packing up distract you. So I think he was packing up to leave the, the show. And, you know, he was putting his cases in there. He was putting his extra supplies in there um, or, or whatever. And I, I would say, I would gather to say that the briefcase wasn't his main focus. It wasn't in a secure place. It was only in his arm. And someone just ripped it out of his hand. And this goes back to how everything has become more laxed over the years. If we were to think about this now and how me and Casey see every single coin show, we are always on high alert. Every single coin show is different. doesn't matter if it's the same venue, the same dealers. Nothing is the same to us because you have to stay on high alert. There's people that come into a coin show that are brand new, that look to take advantage of you, look to swap stuff, look to rob you in the parking lot. And so keep an eye out for everybody that might become new to you or even people that want to take advantage of you that have been in the space for a while. And so that's very important. Make sure every coin show is different no matter, no matter what is the same. Uh, the rule number five is leave a copy of your inventory on a flash drive or at home. And the reason being is because once the thief get it, gets all this stuff, it could be a hundred thousand, half a million, a million dollars worth of stuff, they need to go sell it somewhere. And most of the time, thieves aren't very smart. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna grab your inventory, they're gonna either take it to a local shop or a shop that's three hours away. And the thing about NCIC is that they post this across all the coin shops that are following them and also across all the states. And so there's been many instances where people rob someone's inventory and they literally take it to a coin shop a few hours away and the cops are there and they get arrested and the inventory is restored. But if you don't keep an inventory of what you bring to the show, what you leave to the show with, then you're not going to be helped because what are you going to say? Oh, I only have this much, I think. I don't know what I brought. And then uh, ultimately you're robbed and no one can help you. And that's something that's bad. Um, something else to th think about as well is that just like rule number seven, I'm sorry, just like rule number uh, 38, Rule number four is kind of the same way. Travel with somebody and share your estimated time of arrival. Um, travel with somebody because, once again, you're displaying a type of strength, but also you guys can divide and conquer. If, say, if uh, this dealer walked to the car with his briefcase, sat in the car and was locked, and then he had someone else that he was traveling with, they could have loaded the car and uh, kept, you know, kept an eye out as well. And so traveling alone really sometimes will hurt you, especially when you are vulnerable. And so this is a little bit about, you know, the part one that we want to talk about with stopping numismatic crimes, because it feels like it's more prevalent today more than ever. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's very important. There's one more thing I want to touch on with rule number five here. Um, they also talk about taking photos of your cases before you pack them up and when you, when you, uh, when you get them set up. So say you come into a coin show with 50 coins, okay? Uh, 10 of them sell, but you know, you took a photo of them before 10 of them sell and you buy 20 more. So now you have 60 coins. And so taking a photo at the end of a coin show before you pack up is important as well, because the photos you took at the beginning of the coin show don't necessarily matter if you get taken advantage of at the end of a coin show. And so that's just something to take, uh, you know, inventory of for yourself. But if you guys enjoyed this video today, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on this situation. Maybe a situation we should cover in the future. Uh, make sure you guys uh, subscribe for more videos like this. We want to make more parts to this, talking about different situations that could have been prevented if they followed the 67 rules that Doug Davis and Brian Davis prescribed. Um, if you guys want to follow what they do, uh, make sure to click on the link down below. We'll also include a link to all of these uh, tips for you if you want to print them out and hand them to a local dealer or if you guys want to use them for yourself. Um, but thank you guys for watching today's video. We will see you guys in the next one.